The final group of frames, which Stanford White designed, are those which he executed for a particular painting, sometimes at the request of the artist, and at other times for himself or another patron, such as Freer. These are more or less unique designs. This lace pattern was a very special frame, which was used on Dewing's portrait of Stanford White's wife. About this time, White wrote that he had made the frame specially for the portrait of Bessie and did not wish to ever have it repeated. The portrait with frame is seen hanging in the parlor of Stanford White's house. Somewhat similar in feeling to the lace frame is this frame on George DeForest Brush's painting of a mother and child, now in the collection of the Metropolitan Museum. The painting was purchased by J. Montgomery Sears of Boston, who ordered the frame from White. In a letter to the artist, White said that the frame cost over $400 and was a beautiful piece of delicate relief work. He then wrote to Sears that, Brush's picture is so fine a one that it seemed to me to deserve the best setting it could get, and I really think it has come out successfully. The frame on Doing's portrait of a young girl was originally done for Caroline Hecker of New York, who contacted White directly to order the frame. White himself was very fond of this particular frame. He wrote to Miss Hecker, The little frame for your Doing picture is done. I worked very carefully over it, and I am sure you will like it, but its price is pretty steep, the frame without the gilding costing $120. If this should frighten you at all, I should be glad to keep the frame myself and make you another. In the end, she was very pleased with the frame, and White had another made for a Thayer landscape in his home, which is seen hanging just below the ceiling in the green room. Here is a view of the back of a frame, which was made by Joseph Cabus, White's earliest frame maker. Cabus's frames seem to have a very simple construction, basically composed of four mitered pieces to which the ornament has been applied. Other white frames have a different construction, indicating the work of other frame makers, but more work needs to be done on this subject. Also for Thomas Dewing is this extraordinary frame together with its matching sofa. The painting is The Days, and it was owned by the Cheney family of Connecticut for whom White designed a number of different things, ranging from an office building, to several houses, to interior decorating and picture frames. This is most certainly a unique combination of picture frame with matching sofa. The ornament on each is different but complementary, both using combinations of floral scrolls and patterned moldings of different widths. White made this frame for Tryon's New England Hills of 1901. The painting was owned by Charles Lang Freer, who was dazzled. He wrote to the artist. I saw for the first time your New England Hills in its new frame, and I was more charmed than I can tell you. Stanford White has produced another of his masterly things, and I don't believe a more harmonious setting was ever conceived for a picture. I am sure it will make your back go goose flesh when you see it. The frame was made by Oscar Rudolph and cost $85. White designed a good number of very special frames for his friend Abbot Thayer. Their correspondence abounds with many references to Thayer's paintings, along with requests for frames. Like the doing portrait of his wife, which had a unique frame, this portrait of his mother, Mrs. Richard Grant White, also had a unique frame. The portrait can be seen as well, hanging in White's parlor. These two paintings by Thayer were originally owned by J. Montgomery Sears of Boston. The design of the frame is defined by the elongated scroll at the outer edge of the frame. White was not only aware of the relationship of the painting to its frame, but also very sensitive to the issue of how frames related to one another. When he made the frame for the portrait of Helen Sears, Stanford White told Sears, I have made the design purposely in character with the frame for the Madonna, but only so in its general style. All the details in its effect will be quite different. While this frame on Thayer's painting, Diana, at the Freer Gallery is not typical of White's designs, its similarity to a drawing with notations identifying it as a full-scale detail of a frame for Mr. Thayer and a later notation superseded indicate that surely White designed the frame. The large, bold abstractions of flower buds, bordered by a leaf and berry molding on one side and gadruning on the other, set off the spare portrait with a dark background in a most dramatic way. Freer owned four of these extraordinary frames. It was first designed for Cornish headlands in 1899. Freer seems to have ordered the frame directly from Stanford White, replacing the frame which Thayer must have originally put on it. 
It was the first frame in the Freer collection, which was made by Oscar Rudolph. Freer wrote to Thayer about the frame. Its new setting is so much better than the old, and I prize it as one of my finest possessions. Freer had the frame duplicated in 1901 for Thayer's portrait of Capri, and again in 1904 for Thayer's Monadnock in Winter. The final version of the frame was on Thayer's Monadnock II in 1912. Finally, this is probably among the last frames that Stanford White designed. It was for a painting of an angel, which Abbot Thayer was doing for Charles Lang Freer. The painting was very special and required an equally special frame. White made a number of different designs and in a letter to Thayer included the following commentary. The picture, in a certain way, is very difficult to frame for the reason that it is a formal and posing picture and would, of course, stand in a very heavy architectural frame. At the same time, a large picture always looks best, I think, with a narrow frame, and I understand this is your view also. Number one is a three-quarters column. Number two is a full column. Number three is a pilaster frame. Number four could be done the quickest of any. They seem to have decided upon design number four, which is seen here, although White died before the painting was completed. Freer never seems to have gotten around to having the frame made, despite his obsession with hunting down the design through White's partner, William Rutherford Mead. Stanford White clearly took frame designing very seriously. He gave much consideration to the aesthetics of the painting and the manner in which the frame would enhance it. He derived much pleasure from his involvement in the creative process and devoted some of his tireless energy to his friends. Abbott Thayer was a devoted and dear friend of Stanford White. Just after White's death in 1906, he wrote to Thomas Dewing. What a sense of collapse goes through us at the change his death makes. Well, words are poor things. The amount of it is that White was a real great emperor and father of art after all and he leaves a great hush after him.